And good morning, and welcome back to the Vine Morning Show. Here we are on this Monday morning. I'm Mark. It's great to have you in this morning on this Monday, and we watch and we thank those that are watching on our YouTube channel this morning here on Vine Television, watching on YouTube, and also those watching on TV Cable Channel 15, our uh, New Wave affiliate. We thank those that are watching the this morning as we welcome in our good friend Laura Greenhouse this morning. Laura, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Mark. Yeah, welcome in on this beautiful Monday morning. Yeah. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous out it's, today? It's just great. The weekend was good and I just can't believe all this wonderful weather we're having. All right. Well, we do have rain in the forecast today, yes. so we'll see yes. what happens with that. But yes. uh, hey, we've got a lot of uh, interesting things to talk about today. Yes. And I was I was intrigued by I know we're going to get to it here in just a few moments. 27 things that yes. could happen uh, September and October, mm-hmm. but but we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna go lead off with what this morning? Yeah, well, you know, um, talking about a critical spirit, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna tell on myself here in a little while. But first, you mentioned faith like a child earlier mm-hmm. when you were talking about your faith. I want to tell this cute little thing. I'm, I, I'm gonna tell you Auntie story. Okay, All my right. little niece. Yesterday at church, we sang, "I have decided to follow Jesus." Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's kind of repetitive. And so my little niece, which is, I mean, freshly a two-year-old, and she, her mom, texted me later after church, and she said, Nadia was kind of singing and saying, I have decided <laughs> to follow Jesus. No turning back. <laughs> and it was so cute. Oh, my goodness. It's just adorable. And, you know, out of the mouth of babes. Yes. Praise, yes. you know, and we've got to teach these kids at a young age and we got to get it not only in their head, but in their heart mm-hmm. and Amen. faith like a child. And I was so glad that you said that this morning because we need to constantly be reminded, reminded. of that one simple thing. You must mm-hmm. be born again. We must have faith like a child. So anyhow, and, and her sister, her sister Ilsa, you know what she said to me yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids, they're just crazy. They're just crazy. They just say just oh things. they'll say anything and, and, and it's funny how they say it too it's yeah. hilarious oh we're getting ready to pray and i always she always sits on my lap four years old so i lifted her up and we're standing there in rodney's you know kind of preparing us with some prayer thoughts and such and she said um 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 wara i i, I take showers now <laughs> <laughs> and i thought oh my goodness they're so cute you know yeah. they're just liable to say anything sure. and they're just they're just so innocent, you sure, know. They are. So anyway, yeah, that's, that's good. That's my auntie stories for the day. But anyway, getting to a critical spirit, I'm going to read from Ephesians 4:29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as it fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Mm. And that right there says a mouthful because, you know, it's easy to talk bad. It's easy to think the worst of people. And sometimes it's kind of fun Mm. to hear something. Oh, that went wrong for this person or, oh, that went wrong for them. Oh, I feel so much better about myself or, you know, oh, this or that or this or that. It's easy for our minds to go the wrong direction. Always. And, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple weeks ago I was at a grocery store. And I was checking out in a, you know, pretty good sized line. And here comes this older lady kind of flustered and she busts through the doors and she goes, someone stole my car. Someone stole my car. And, you know, the lady at the cash register, she she was a little bit stunned. She went, well, ma'am, are you sure you didn't misplace it? No, no, I parked it right there. I always park right there in front. And she goes, someone stole my car. So they run and they get her a phone. (laughs) And so anyway, she's dialing the police, you know, and, and pretty soon the police comes and she walks outside, you know, and I'm, I'm taking all of this in. And as soon as I get out to my car and I'm loading my groceries, I just happen to look up and there she is in the middle of the parking lot loading her groceries too. And I thought, okay, I don't think it got stolen, but your mind immediately went to that. But you know, Mark, I got to thinking shame on me because when I was in line, listening to this dramatic I, my car is stolen, my car is stolen I'd been in that store for about 45 minutes and I already had it picked out who it must have been <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the truth, I really? really did, I mean I'm just like oh it must have been them, oh they looked a little bit shady <laughs> and I think shame on me Mark 
traffic. So she just she just misplaced where she parked she her car. She just misplaced it, and she was sure someone had stolen. And Laura Great House was sure she knew who did she it. Knew who did it? Oh my goodness! <laughs> and I thought, good, thank you, God, for knocking me on the head sure. once again. Because that was a bad attitude. That was the wrong way of thinking. Those could have been very nice people. And I thought they were gangsters. You know, oh, I yeah. thought they were, were car thieves. Sure. And that's just how we do. Sure. That's how sure. we roll. That's how we work. And that's what we've got on our mind. And I thought, yeah, that's just a good story for the vine because we've all done it. Haven't you we? know, we've all done that. Have you ever done this before? And I don't want to throw you oh, off no, track. No, but no. <laughs> but have you ever tried to get into or known somebody that's trying to get into a vehicle that looks like yours? Okay. <laughs> It's yeah, happened to us saying. before, and it's happened to us when we were in, in St. Louis, oh, and, and we had parked near a vehicle that looked like ours, uh-huh. and you don't think of it at first till you come back out, and you're, th- you're messing with your key fob, and, right. and it, it, you know, it, it won't go off, and you're okay. thinking, okay, wait, wait here just a minute. That's not my car. I thought this is where I parked it, uh-huh. and then all of a sudden, you hear this beeping from a distance. <laughs> And it's like, you know, and then you're thinking, well, how come mine will go off? Then you're thinking, no, wait here. You've been in this store for maybe an hour and a half, two hours, and it's like, right. no, no, we, we didn't park it here. <laughs> Whose car is this? And you try the key, and you try oh to my. put the key in the hole, oh, yes. and it will fit in there, but it won't turn the lock. <laughs> and then you still off in the distance here, this meep, beep, oh. beep. And then you get maybe, you know, your better half says, hey, uh, you know what? We parked maybe four or five rows oh, over, and it's like, oh, you hit how the, embarrassing. You hit the button. <laughs> Turn it off, and then then it works, and you're thinking, that's our vehicle about four or five rows yes, over. Yes, yes. I have almost gotten into wrong people's, other person's vehicles oh, no. before, too. Yeah, it's crazy things, but <laughs> oh, my goodness. What we do in our oh, lives, I, I Mark. I know, I know, I know. God must be sitting up there getting a big chuckle out of us well, He was laughing at us when we I'm were sure. going through all that, you know. So. <laughs> and wouldn't it have been cute to get your pictures on the camera, you Oh, know? my goodness, yeah. And then you know, funny. Could be the security people out there watching you in the park parking lot and laughing because they right. know that's where you right. parked over here and they're exactly. just watching to see your reaction. And you know, Mark, <laughs> I love that because all of our listeners listeners are sitting out there and they love when we tell mistakes about ourselves. Oh, sure. They love, and I love hearing, you know, oh, really, you did something dumb too? Oh, good. You know, doesn't it make you feel better? It makes you feel better. It, you know you know that we're only human. That's right. We're only human. It really does. Um, Colossians 3, 12 through 14, this is a good one. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. We're to put on a compassionate heart. Kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another. Now, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Bearing with one another. Um, If one has a complaint against you, against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And you know... I like this, bearing with one another. Mm. We have to put up with one another. We do. We do. You're we, constantly around people 24-7, and that yes. person you may have something against or vice versa, yes. you have to, if it's in a workplace especially, right. you have to get along. Right. You have to. And you know, one thing that I've tried, and I will emphasize tried to practice, is having mercy on somebody. You know, when somebody does something and it really just ticks you off, you have to think, okay, what happened leading up to this, Mm -hmm. you know? And there's times where I know I offend Tom, and he offends me, and the other day I got a chance to look at what happened before that that got him, he was like in a tizzy, Mm -hmm. and he was upset, and his his grandbabies had come to church with us, and he's like, I'm, I'm leaving. You know, we drove separately because we normally do because he does music. And um, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. He's taking the girls. I'll take them. The car seats are already in my car, and, and I'll take them. And no, I got to go. I got to go. And I thought, what is your hurry? And I just couldn't figure out. After we got home... I found out that one of the girls had a dirty diaper, and Lucy and her cousin were trying to change it, and it was a mess, and I knew nothing about it because I was in the back. (laughs) And then during this tizzy before after, one of the kids got a Windex bottle and squirted Windex in Nadia's eyes, and, of course, she screamed for five minutes. And so Tom Greathouse had had it, 
and I didn't know anything about it. All I see is him grabbing up the grandbabies and his and his guitar, and he's wanting to rush out of there. And I'm like, what? What's going on? Mm-hmm. You know? Sure. And it kind of made me mad. But then, whenever you unravel the cord and right. see where they have been and what got them to that point, you're like. Uh, More uh-huh. clear understanding. At right. That point. Yes. Exactly. And so having mercy on people is something that we will have to practice till the day that we die. Mm-hmm. Uh, till or when Jesus, is re- t- Jesus returns, we have to pre- practice that. And, you know, sometimes when I get angry at somebody or they upset me or they do something, I have to think, OK, all right. What path have they walked in their whole lifetime, maybe? that made them that way, that made them, um, you know, want everything just perfect Mm -hmm. and everything just has to be their way and and they see it, you know, what happened to them in their life? Or if they were so grouchy or they were so upset, what is it, you know, that caused them? And, you know, we have got to have mercy. We've got to show compassion and understanding and have patience bearing, which I'll say putting up with one another. Mm -hmm. And, Here's another good one. Romans 12, 3. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Wow. And you know, good. Mark, come on. Is it not easy sometimes to think that I'm better than them? Sure. It is. Sure. It is. It, it is. And that's the mindset, it seems like, today of, of everybody. Right, right. Yeah. And, and and so easily we'll see this person that um, maybe their intelligence is, is their IQ is not real high. Uh, they're not dressed right. Um, they, you know, are living in a certain place and maybe there's, you know, stuff everywhere and it's disarray. It's easy to think, oh, I'm glad I'm not them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's awful. And it's wrong, and we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to um, associate with people less than us, Mm -hmm. you know, people that in lower positions, not that they're lower people or lower anything, but just we're not supposed to think and put our sights and our admiration on somebody that is rich, has a high position, has beautiful clothes, a beautiful car, an outstanding house. We're not supposed to uh, start marking ourselves on this pole according to what we might be worth economically. Sure, sure. And That's all a part of judging, too. You know? It and, is. And I, I'm, I'm going to let you read I'm going to show you this. The listeners can't see, but I want to show you this. This is something that was on was on Facebook, and it kind of ties into what you're talking about okay. today. And I want you to read Ooh. that because it makes perfect sense. Ooh. Okay, this from Facebook says, Do not judge. You don't know what storm I've asked her to walk through from God. Mm. And that is well spoken. Yeah. I think about sometimes when you go to a restaurant or you go through a checkout line and somebody is is crabby. Mm -hmm. You think, maybe their husband just left them last night. Yeah. Maybe they just found out that their wife was committing adultery. Maybe they just had to foreclose on their house a week ago and they have nowhere to go mm-hmm. or they're living with a, a whole another family and there's there's 12 people in the house. Mm-hmm. You're right, Mark. You, you, you don't know. You know, life life can change in in the snap of a finger, in the blink of an eye. It can. And you don't know what someone is going through. That's exactly right. And it's not our place to judge. Right, exactly. Or if somebody comes into the store and they're not very clean, well, who's to say that they didn't have their water shut off for means that were out of their hands? Sure, You know, sure. And if their clothes aren't exactly right, don't you think they'd love to have clothes as nice as oh, we absolutely. have? Absolutely. I have, you know, there's somebody that I know, and I'll say this real fast. Oh, you got time. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And I... There have been many people that have been helping this person and this family. And we did it a lot and didn't want to, Mm -hmm. you know? Sure. Sometimes you just have to do things you don't really want to do. And there were some circumstances I thought might come up and in the future. I thought, well, should I do this? Am I going to have to do this? And then I thought, Laura, suck it up. That person would trade places with you in a split second. Mm -hmm. And I thought, 
I am so ashamed. God keeps showing me things Mm -hmm. that I need to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And if that person needs a little bit of help once in a while, or they need this or they need that, and if I can provide that for them, I should. Mm -hmm. I should. Because I, oh, I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want to trade places with them for nothing. Sure, Not that it's sure. the most horrible circumstances, but you know, we've got to help these people that are in positions that we aren't in or that we've been in mm-hmm. and we know what it feels like. Yeah, Sometimes absolutely. that's the best times we can help is when I have walked those shoes before and I know how painful, can't you? Your mm-hmm. heart's open to that. Sure, sure. You, you're in a situation, for instance, an illness or something that comes yes. upon you. And you see how it's affected you, and now you're seeing how it's affecting somebody else. And if you can step in and help, offer some type of help some way, because you've been down that road, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, then then take that step of faith. Do it, because God's going to lead you, and he's going to show you what he can do to help them out and help you along the way be that person's rescue. That's right. And you know, I'll end with this one thought. I heard this story. There was two ladies and they were talking back and forth. And the one lady was telling about some terrible tragedies that had happened in her life. Mm -hmm. And the other lady was listening with compassion. And, and, um, then the lady, the other lady replied and she says, I've never had a, a tragedy in my life. And the first lady that had experienced tragedies looked at her and she said, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I thought, woo, (laughs) that was a huge statement. Mm. She looked at the lady who had never experienced a tragedy, and she felt compassion for her. Well, I'm sorry you've never been through anything like that Mm -hmm. because it is life-changing as you and I both know it. Mm -hmm. When you go through something devastating, something so frightening, and and even a a quick frighten or a frightening thing that lasts for months and months, you know it's changed you forever from the inside out. And somebody that's a, a, a spoiled, rotten brat that's always had everything they've ever needed and all the money and, and bless their hearts, but their parents were always together in a kind, loving relationship. And, and they've always had, you know, clothes on their back and, and food in their mouth and, and a vehicle, you know, and they just ain't never had a fly in their soup. I'm sorry for you, too. Mm, wow. It's good stuff with Laura this morning, and we're going to come back here in just a moment and continue with our conversation with Laura. She's got more good things to talk about this morning here on the Vine Morning Show. We encourage you to stay tuned. That is Toby Mack along with Mr. Talkbox here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9, the Vine, the best Christian music for you and your family, and their song called Feel It. Welcome back to the Vine Morning Show. Here we are on this beautiful Monday morning. And again, we welcome in those watching on our YouTube channel this morning and also cable TV channel 15. Welcome back. As we're talking with our good friend Laura Greenhouse this morning, Laura is the host of Keeping Watch. You hear twice daily here on Real Life Radio. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mark. And you know, we're uh, into the 17th day of August, and this month is flying by in a hurry. And before you know it, September and October is going to be upon us. And there, <laughs> and as Christians, if you've been reading and studying up and reading a lot of what's been going on and what's being prophesied, uh-huh. there's some events coming up that is going to make September and October very interesting yes. if you're a Christian. Yes, right? right. And it's funny when you said September, your eyes got big. Mm-hmm. It was like, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> It's like fasten your seatbelts. And, you know, we don't know for sure what's going to happen, but um, it it's undeniable things are set in motion and dates are set for some of these activities, and there's just no denying it. Um, I've been studying this. A um, couple guys have been on this certain YouTube channel, and they've studied out 27 things to happen or supposed to happen in September and a few in October. And so I jotted down this list and I thought, you know, it's just intriguing. Sure. And we can chat about it. And some of the things I don't even really know what they are. And right. maybe you can help me out with them. Um, but we'll just start at the number one thing that they had. This rabbi, Rad- Rabbi Kaim, um, he 
has recently stated in a headline, they had this headline, leading Israeli rabbi says the arrival of the Messiah is imminent. And, you know, that led me to believe, uh, to remember Judah Ben Samuel. You know, we talked about mm-hmm. the prophecy of Judah Ben Samuel. And, and just briefly for our listeners that, that has not, um, Judah Ben Samuel was born in the 1100s. And he made like five different prophecies regarding the Jews, Israel, and Jerusalem. And four out of the five have come to pass exactly. Oh, wow. And it is profound, and we've visited it months ago, and maybe I will revisit it one of these days, but it is a jaw-dropper. And so anyway, the fifth one that's getting ready, you know, or so he says, the fifth one is this. There'll be one more jubilee after uh, Jerusalem is taken back, and we know that was 1967, and that at that time or before that time, I can't remember exactly the word, uh, which would be 2017, that the saints would be raptured. Mm-hmm. And this is a man that lived hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and he got four out of these prophecies dead on. Wow. Who knows? Who knows? You know, there's someone else out there, too, and, and you can go back and, and look at Sir Isaac Newton, who was a yes. devout Christian. Yes. He also came up with a formula yes, as to did. these things that are going to take place yes. coming up in September. That's so right. when you can go back that far, yes. and with everything else that, that uh, Perry Stone, John Hagee, mm-hmm. and what you just shared with us there, it all ties in. It does. There's got to be something there. I know. There has to be. And, you know, um, Sir Isaac Newton, he was a bio Bible scholar, mm-hmm. almost obsessed with the uh, book of Daniel, yes. which is extremely prophetic. And, you know, I believe it was uh, Daniel 9, 23 and 24, which talks about calculating these days. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about it before, you know, predicting uh, Christ and, and then predicting his return. And Sir Isaac came up with, from what I've studied, September 23rd of 2015. That's what I was going to say, mm-hmm. too, because, it, and I'm not a math scholar, but, yeah, if you, if you, but if you follow along with what he's teaching and what right. he shows you, mm-hmm. then it all, and he's, he's done this equation in so many different ways, it all yes. still adds up to the uh, 23rd of September. Yes, and that is Day of Atonement. Yes. One of God's high holy days. And how could he have known... You know, way back when that that would have been, I don't know. Maybe he did some math. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But anyhow, there are so many of these uh, prophetic people that are speaking of the time that we're living in. Um, Another one was Rabbi Kaduri. Yes. Yeah. And he was an Orthodox Jew, did not believe in Jesus, believed that they're still waiting for the Messiah. And then he had a vision dream. And he woke up and said, I was visited by the Messiah in my dream. And he says, I'm going to write it down, and I don't want it open till a year after my death. He died at 108 years old. And this was just a few years before he died. And he said that shortly after the death of Ariel Sharon, the Messiah would appear in his glory. And we all know that Ariel Sharon died January of 2014. Mm -hmm. And he, after he was dead, for one year they opened it up and in acronyms it spelled out Yeshua. Wow. So he gave him the credit. Now when you, uh, when you, when you hear that word Yeshua and you, Mm -hmm. that's Jesus. That's right. And that sends a cold chill down when it was spelled out like that. Absolutely. If that, if that doesn't make you think and and make your eyes like, wow, yes, wow, there is meaning. There's got to be something behind all this. Absolutely. And you know, they put it up on the Israeli sites and the news and things like that. And then real quick, they took it down. Because the Orthodox Jew does not believe, they're just like, well, that just can't be, and and that had to have been falsified, and they just came up with all sorts of things to debunk Mm -hmm. this. But um, it was up there long enough for some Bible scholars in America to grab hold of it, and I've seen the actual copy, obviously, on the Internet. Uh, But, it, yeah, you can see just kind of um, very sketchy and and writing. And and it's common for Hebrew people to write Mm. with the acronyms. That's a very common thing. So anyhow, that is number one. Help me, Lord, to get through these. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> we'll get through them. We'll get through them. They're All interesting, right. I'm sure. They are very yeah. interesting. And some of them will go really fast because I don't know much about them. Uh, number two, we all know that the Shemitah year ends. Um, and it's the final day of a seven-year cycle, September 13th. And mm-hmm. we know that that's, that's a big deal. We are learning that that's a big deal. Um, Shemitah year is a huge thing. If we're following God, it's a great thing. And if we've turned our backs on God, it could be a sign of judgment or a fall or a collapse. And we had some foreshadows at the beginning of the Shemitah. We'll foreshadow things that are often to come at a greater intensity at the ending of the Shemitah. So that... That that's an alarming day for me. Oh, it, yeah. it just is, and I know we're not supposed to be afraid, but I am human and I am flawed, and there are parts of this that are alarming. Number three, we all know that Rosh Hashanah also begins September 13th, and it's a two-day festival. It's the Jewish New Year. It's celebrating the anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve. Um, it's the Feast of Trumpets. It's often commonly known in Israel as the day or hour that no man knows. And many Bible scholars say when Jesus said that, that he's telling you when he's coming back. And I know that's a hard nut for some people to swallow, and they will argue till the cows come home. No man knows the day or the hour. No man knows the day or the hour. And, Mark, I always say, if that's the first thing and the only thing that you can say back, then you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's all that you know. You really don't know. Get educated on it and get your argument squared away, or you really don't have the right to say anything. These people have studied this out. The seven feasts of the Lord are such an amazing thing that we have skipped over. We've heard of Passover growing up, didn't we, Mark? Mm -hmm, Sure did. Did you hear of any others? Mm -mm. I didn't either. No, no. I didn't either. And you know, it's, it's just that in the end times, we will understand these things more clearly as each day passes. And I really believe that God's high holy days are very meaningful moed appointments appointments so anyhow moving past Rosh Hashanah and that's my belief and many many other people believe mm-hmm. that the Lord will return on uh, some year we don't know when on the Feast of Trumpets mm-hmm. okay but you know if we get to heaven and he doesn't y'all can laugh at me and, mm-hmm. and poke fun but all right number four the year of light begins officially on September the 14th okay the year of light yeah, this is kind of spooky to me because mm. it ties I in. I know where you're going okay, with this. Okay, all right, mm-hmm. and it ties in with the Illuminati and all sorts of things, and, and I'm going to revisit it later on down this list. Um, now, number five, Mark, I didn't get a chance to look this one up. Um, UN resolution for Palestine to become a state goes into effect on September 15th. Do you know anything about I've that? I've heard just vaguely a little bit okay. about that, but I don't think they're really saying too much about okay, it. Okay, see, point. I don't know enough about that to even speak intelligently mm-hmm. on that, so I'm just going to skip that. But that was number five on their list. Mm-hmm. Um, it is intriguing, and it's interesting, and I'll just leave it at that. Number six on their list was Jade Helm 15. Mm-hmm. Okay, it became... Uh, begun on July the 15th, and it is supposed to um, end, publicly end, on September the 15th. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've watched some debates on that and and things in Texas, and people are very upset, although I don't understand a whole lot about it. Right. There's a lot of people that seem to be very upset about this, and it's opening, uh, it's raising a lot of eyebrows, Mm -hmm. but I'm ignorant to it, and I really can't speak about it because I don't know much about it. Right. Um, but it's something that people can look up if they're interested. Um, number seven, International Day of Peace is on September the 21st. Have you ever heard of that? Now, is that where the Pope is coming into the United States? Is well, that on further down? Uh, the Pope <coughs> is coming later. Yeah, that's later down like um, the 25th or okay. 26th. I think I've got this written down here. But the, but the Day of Peace, I have never heard of that before on September the 21st, and and then in parentheses, um, it was stated peace and safety. Mm. And we all know that verse, I think it's in Thessalonians, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if, if we are heading close to the tribulation and the Lord's return, we know as Bible, as our Bible states, that they will say peace and safety, and then it all just goes kablooey. Mm. We know that. So we are we are looking as Christians for those words to be spoken. Will it be this fall? I don't know. I don't know. It makes me think, and I didn't get to look this up either, that this is a day that 
that is repetitious that every year, or maybe it's a one-time event. I don't know. But Day of Peace, September 21st, if you can and are interested, you can look further into it, as I hope to also. And we all know the Day of Atonement begins on September 23rd, and I think all the feasts run for a week. Is that right? a week, I believe, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And then number eight, the 70th, 70th. Uh, Jubilee, you know, we're approaching this, Mark. Mm. And, you know, not only are we ending a seven, we are ending a seven seven. So seven times seven is 49. Well, 49 times 70 puts you at the 3,400 and whatever, uh, 30 years, whatever it was, starting uh, counting Jubilees from the time when the Israelites, I believe, entered Canaan. So this is... This is a big deal. Hmm. I mean, this is a huge, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is a a end of a sevens seven. So that may not mean much to anybody, but it means something to us that knows a little tiny schmid, you know, Mm -hmm. smidget about it, and that would be me, not much. Okay, this one I wasn't familiar with at all, the Day of Arafat. You ever heard of that, Mark? I'm not really. No. I've, I'm, I've seen it, but never really read or anything studied on it. Okay. Yet. Not um, yet, but I'm going to, though. Okay, yes, and that's one that, that I started to look up, and I started to jot down some things and didn't get it done, so we'll just keep moving. Number 10 is the Muslims' Feast of Sacrifice is September 24th. Hmm. Interesting. And, you know, the more I learn about um, Islam and, and the Koran and different things, which is not much, once again, right. that I'm, I'm learning these, these eerie correlations of our gospel and their Bible and things that they're looking for and things that we're looking for. And it's just like just a little cockamamie. And it's really someday I want us to, to speak about that when I'm in a situ in a place where I can intelligently speak about it. Uh, but it's very odd. You know, they're expecting their redeemer to come on a white horse and and it's just you you just sit there and you're like, Ooh, really? And you know, many of the Muslim critics are expecting their redeemer, their Mahdi, to come in September. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little bizarre, but for whatever that's worth, that's um, some things worth studying out some more. Um, and then, let's see, we touched on this one. Yeah, Sir Isaac Newton, um, they were talking about the calendar and how things are adding up for 2015. And I just put a little side note of Isaac Newton and his prophecy for September 23rd, Day of Atonement. Um, number 12, I kind of understood this one a little bit you know the mayan cycle and yeah, and how the yeah. calendar was to end and and uh, you know uh, a further note on that uh, dr tom horn was talking about how one of their main leaders found jesus and he got saved and and they weren't saying that the world was going to end but that it was going to lead into a shift a new beginning and we know prophetically speaking mark 2012 there was a hard shift in things. There was a hard change. Things have never been the same, if you ask me, since 2012. There was a definite, definite mark where things really got sped up. Prophecy began fulfilling crazy, amazing things. The harbinger came out. Um, okay, number 13, this is a big one, and CERN. And we've spoken about CERN before, and for those of our listeners that didn't catch it the last time, CERN is this amazing, I mean, amazing hydron collider where they are taking particles and they are spinning them around at the speed of light. And they've been warned even by Einstein, don't do it, folks. You're going to open up a can of worms that you will not be able to close. Open up Pandora's box, something that you don't want. It may be interesting. It may be fun. It may be exciting, but you are going to get into a mess. And, you know, I told you way back earlier in the summer that they're saying that in September, they're hoping to be able to open some portals and those dates are September 23rd and 24th that from the information that I've been given that they are hoping real hard for that date to open up some portals and it's you know it's very very scary to me and it's very upsetting and this all kind of ties into, and I think this is later on my list, but I may bring it up now, the Illuminati, uh, the, um, 
Tomorrow World. Mm. If you look up Tomorrow World, they're having this big concert or conference or something in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And that's coming up like on, um, here it is, the 25th through the 27th. Hmm. Opening up portals on the 23rd and 24th for CERN, and then a big Illuminati um, concert, and um, maybe, like I said, some seminar of some sort, the 25th through the 27th in Atlanta, Georgia. And, and guess what the, the title here, this is, this will just make you sick to your stomach, Mark. Um, celebrating false love and light, keys, antichrist, and opening gates and portals. Yeah, it's it's like a. Uh, I remember seeing a little bit of a highlight. What it's 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 a opening the dark. Yeah. And it's like what? And it's like you, they you, expect thousands and thousands of people there in attendance. That's right. It's something that you can't even believe it unless you've seen a snip of it yourself with your own eyes on a video. Mm -hmm. You can't even believe it. It just makes you just. I I just sit there almost frozen. I can't believe what I just witnessed. It's just like death and demons and light and people just kind of like out of their mind. It it's bizarre to say the least. And I can't. I don't even have words to describe it, Mark. I need. Uh, I have a, a a friend of mine who is a police officer in Atlanta, and he's a Christian. Oh, I need wow. to get in touch with him and oh, see yes. what his thoughts are on yes. this, and see how they're preparing for it down yes. there in the city of Atlanta. Oh, I need to do that. It's just crazy. It's spooky. Um, but CERN is also celebrating the Year of Light. Hmm. Makes you wonder. And another thing these guys said that a site that they commonly went to to get information on CERN is now locked. Mm hmm Hmm. That makes you scratch your head just a little bit too, mm -hmm. doesn't it? It sure does. Okay, and then this is a huge one to me. Madonna is on a tour, and the opening theme is, hope you're glad you're sitting down, Mark, Desecration of the Bride and the Arrival of Fallen Angels. Oh, my. And she's supposed to play on September the 24th in Philadelphia, September the 26th in Boston, um, the 16th and 17th at Madison Square Gardens. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And so, anyway, I was trying to look this up and, you know, looking up what these guys said. And I couldn't never find... This title, Desecration of the Bride and the Arrival of Fallen Angels, by typing in Madonna's tour. I never could find it. So I just went and typed in Desecration of the Bride and the Arrival of Fallen Angels, and it gave me several videos of Madonna. And one of the first ones was a three-minute clip. Mark, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, you can't even imagine. It was a concert, if I remember right, from September 23rd hmm, of 2012, and it started out, you know, it's just got this dark theater and, and you've got this huge lantern or something, this light. And everything was just really, I just can't even describe it. It was kind of antique-ish, but it was kind of futuristic at the same point in time. And this lantern or this big light was just swinging through the crowd. And there was this male's voice singing in another language. And on the screen, it wrote out in English what the words were. And they had the audacity to sing Psalms 91. Oh, my goodness. It just make you sick. And that, for those of you that are not familiar, it's um, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. And you'll save me from the pestilence. And it, just, it was just a whole song about Psalms 91. And then Madonna comes out and she says, oh, my G-O-D, oh, my G-O-D. Six or seven times she takes the name of the Lord in vain. Mm. And then all these blastings from the screen and and. I, I'm telling you, Mark, it was, not to brag on it, it was one of the most incredible things that I've ever seen in all of my life. Just this screen just crashes down, just like, like everything crashes, like giving you a glimpse of what could take place in the seven years tribulation, in the ending of time. And it's like they had it mapped they out. They were promoting it. Promoting it. it mm -hmm. Promoting it. And then it, it showed the screen and like fallen angels and like Satan and a pitchfork and, and all these crazy things. And then Madonna was saying these words, um, I have a dread of the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. Like she knows 
that she's going to miss heaven and she's dreading the pains of hell. It was the sickest, most disgusting, sadistic thing I have ever seen. It was horrible. I, I would encourage, if you don't know the state of our country right now, if you don't know the state of our world and the sick minds and the demonic activity that is happening right here in good old US of A, you just look up the desecration of the bride and the arrival of fallen angels and Madonna and look for yourself at this three minute clip. It will astound you. I I am, we are so protected. We are in a bubble. We don't understand how the world is just falling apart around us. All these horrible things that are happening. And that is just pitiful. It just makes me sad. Well, you know, go back to uh, the Super Bowl last year. Yes. Where Katy Perry wrote yes. in on um, what was um, a resemblance of of uh, the dark horse. Yes, of the beast. The uh, beast. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like, ooh, you know. It was. You know. And it's sad, it's sad when a 13-year-old says something is not right. Right. A 13-year-old female says, there is something not right about that. Very good. A 13-year-old knew that wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Had discerning eyes. Yes, Yes. exactly. That's good. And you know, for all of you that saw that Katy Perry show, that was just a whisper of what Madonna's pulling. And I know we need to go to a break, but I want to leave with this. Sure. Years ago, Madonna was um, interviewed, and she was asked, is there anything that you would trade all of this fame and fortune and glory for? And she said, yes, there's one thing, a mother. <laughs> mm. Now, mamas, take care of your babies. Daddies, take care of your babies. It means something. Because just think if she would have had a kind, loving, Christian mother on her knees that cared about her, but she didn't. And I don't know if her mom just didn't pay any attention to her, um, if she died, if she gave her away. I don't remember the story. But that was one thing. She would, And her mouth quivered. They said she almost cried when she said it. She'd give it all. From mother. Mm, wow, mm-hmm. wow. And you know, Madonna is idolized and worshipped by young, yes. young people. And oh, that's what yes. they're trying to do. They're trying to win the younger generation, just like the 13 year old that I knew, no, says that's not right when she saw Katy Perry. Right. Katy Perry is the same way. They're trying right. to win and trying to persuade. Yes. Every the younger generation, this is okay. That's it's right. all right for you to see what we're doing yes, here. That's right. And I was that generation that helped Madonna get famous. When I was in the late 80s, we listened to Madonna mm-hmm. on the radio, cruising down the road. We sang her songs. Oh my goodness. She's just gone plumb. Wild. I mean, crazy, unbelievable, even further than I ever could even imagine. Hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good stuff this morning, Laura. As we're with Laura this morning here on the Vine Morning Show, we're going to come back here in just a few moments and continue our conversation. That is Hillsong's Young and Free here at Real Life Radio, 105.5 and 90.9 The Vine. The best Christian music for you and your family and their song called Alive. Welcome back. It's uh, the Vine Morning Show. Here we are on this beautiful Monday morning. I'm Mark along with Laura. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mark. Hey, we've been uh, talking about a lot of interesting stuff this morning. Mm-hmm. Things that really we we need to pay attention to. Yeah. We need to focus on more. That's right. That's right. We need to know some of these things. And, and most people don't. Mm-hmm. Most people don't know about them. Um, we're only to number 15 and we're not going <laughs> to... We're not going to get far, but I thought I'd just bring up a few sure, more until sure. we wrap it up. Um, number 15, the Pope is due to address U.S. Congress. First time in the United States Congress history. Mm-hmm. That's pretty interesting, and that's in September. I believe it's September the 25th, very close along in there. Um, and the Pope, why he is here, is holding a mass service at Madison Square Garden. That's on the 25th, and he's supposed to visit visit the Philadelphia church. Um, So I don't know, for whatever that's worth, that's pretty interesting to me. Um, Number 19, the French foreign minister. Um, You know how they've been speaking in this climate chaos? And I don't know whether you believe it or not, and I'm I'm not too sure about all of it, but I've heard a lot about it, and I've watched a lot about it. and, And they even gave 
I mean, John Kerry's standing there and, and the French foreign minister and, and they're having like a press conference. And it was like May the 14th of 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And they said 500 days until climate change, climate oh chaos, God. something they're expecting. And it, it falls on September the 25th, I think. And maybe the 23rd, that which is Day of Atonement. But right in there, everything. It's just so many things. Like, wow, so many arrows just keep pointing to September. September, what's going on? Maybe we'll go through the 30 days has September, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. And not really notice much of anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Uh, we know we have the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. Um, that feast is the 27th through the October the 5th, I believe. We know that we're having the fourth and final blood moon, which is also a super blood moon on September the 28th, which is to be hung over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which is always just take my breath away every time I think about it. And um, we know many, many uh, pastors, evangelists, um, Christian financial advisors, secular advisors are commenting on an economic crash in September. And then we know Jonathan Kahn, how he said on Elul 29, 2001, September, um, that's when the the economy crashed, the biggest crash. And then exactly, exactly seven years later on 2008, Elul 29, which that's a Hebrew, Hebrew calendar. Um, our calendar is off. We're on a pagan Gregorian calendar. That's why we miss it um, because it, it, it fluctuates. Mm -hmm. But on the Hebrew calendar, it's dead on. Elul 29, the next uh, crash, and it was even more devastating than the first. And so the next Elul 29, which everybody's looking at with their eyes wide open, is September the 13th, which that's a Sunday, and the um, market will close on Friday, which is oddly 9-11. Does that mean anything? Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Could some of this be coincidence? Eh, I'm not a fan of the word coincidence, mm. but when it comes to God things. Um, so anyhow, that is probably one of the biggest things that people are looking at uh, very closely is the economy crashing. Yeah. And for years and years, it's like some of the secular uh, financial advisors, they said, we didn't know why it always seemed to fall around September, or maybe October. They didn't understand it. But whenever you understand God's cycles and how you're not supposed to abuse them and how you're supposed to let the, the land lay fallow, you're supposed to let the land rest. And, and even on the seventh day, we're supposed to rest. And, you know, a family member, this is just something I try Try not to go anywhere or shop on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I'm 100%, but I, I really work to, to stay at home or be with family on that day. And it was funny how a family member of mine called me and she says, I've got one of those Kohl's cash cards for $10 and it expires <laughs> today. And I'm like, oh, that's $10, Mark. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I, I, I was really tempted. You know, sure. I thought, no, I encourage people, you know, not to not to go. And, and you know, whenever we go places like that, we're making somebody have to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect with it, but I've really worked on it these past few years. But, you know, we've got to honor God's laws. And he says, you know, at that seventh year, this is important. On that seventh day, this is important. And we just, just sling it aside and, and just keep on keeping on. Yeah. And God's laws are coming very visible to us and we're understanding and there's no denying because we are getting revelations and understanding of things that we didn't get before. You know, I, I look at it as the spirit of urgency. We're in that yes. we're in that season right now. Yes. And those that are experiencing the spirit of urgency knows what I mean. Sherry and I have gone through that. We're going through that right now. Yep. And you know what I'm talking about. You know, and what came to me just this past week? Double urgency. Mm. That word double just kind of came upon me. Double urgency. And that's what I feel right now. I just, I'm just almost to the point of just one screen. The house is on fire. Mm. Yeah. Run for your lives. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's how I feel. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Good stuff with Laura this morning that's here good. on the Vine Morning Show.